Hi, it's Aubrey Shepard on January 13th, 2011, uh, sharing some photos of some of the beautiful plants that you can find on our area prairies and uh, edge woodland edges and can have in your own yard. And these are the flowers of some of our native tall grass plants. See the beautiful little, this is a different one. And uh, I believe it's a different grass, yes. And uh, the flower structures are slightly different, but they're beautiful. They're tiny and they challenge the photographer to uh, get a good close up. But they are very important to wildlife and they get very tall, very beautiful. Let's see, that particular plant, um, I believe is actually in the carrot family, and it uh, provides, um, it's a host plant for one of our beautiful swallowtail butterflies. There's a tiny insect, I mean, I'm sorry, little caterpillar, I believe, on that same plant. <clears throat> That's a pretty small flower that I've enlarged. It's on the World Peace Wetland Prairie uh, Peace Circle Garden area and blooms there every summer, or at least usually does, but some years, you know, you, you lose some things and other years certain things are more abundant. And that's particularly true out on the, the uh, uh, open areas, the wild areas of the land. That's a non-native plant, but it has beautiful tiny flowers and it's certainly popular with the uh, uh, bumblebees and things. That's a, that's a tiny five-petaled purple flower at the entry area of World Peace Wetland Prairie. There's a daylily, which are very common for a week or two, sometimes a little longer in the middle of summer. I believe this was about July 9th or 15th. I mean, June 9th or 15th in that area. And I uh, just got a sample of, of some of them growing there at World Peace Wetland Prairie. I, I love the tiny pollinators, the tiny bees, the native wild bees. These aren't the honey bees that, from Europe that most people have for pollinating their crops. But if you can get a close up on one, such as this one on a milkweed plant, you really get to see the beauty, the, the look of the, the uh, clear wings that have a little bit of, of color through them and are like mirrors almost. Here's a tiny future grasshopper on a butterfly milkweed, Asclepius uh, tuberosa. There's a uh, tiny uh, snail on a leaf there. If you look down toward the right and uh, it's next to a uh, another type of milkweed. That is dogbane. It's similar to the milkweed family, but it is not any good for the monarchs. It's good for other insects. And that's a, a mm, it's not a hairy wild petunia. I'm not sure it's similar to it. Uh, can't tell you for sure the name of that one at this moment. And I don't have a list of them with me here. But anyway, it's similar to the the um, hairy wild petunia and the smooth petunia. And there is the Rosa Arkansa, the native prairie rose in our part of the country and all over the Midwest. And that is an obedient plant. You see how the, the top there, the stem bends? Well, the wind can do that and the plant will stay that way. Flowers are very beautiful. They're, they're very plentiful in June in Northwest Arkansas. There's an attempt to get a good close-up of the obedient plant. And they come in, most of the wild ones I find, of course, are the white ones, but they come in a pinkish purple variety also. There's a tiny pale yellow flower that, uh, I can't remember the name of it at the moment, but you can look it up just as I will to remind myself later because I did forget today. And uh, see, it's, not much bigger than my thumb. Well, I believe that's another shot of the obedient plant, and that one's clearly out on Pinnacle Prairie. You can see the apartment complex to the north, just to the, in the left part of the picture. Of course, that's a dragonfly. That's about as good a picture as I get of a dragonfly.